Hey, good morning. Welcome to Soaring Solo with Stacy. This is where uh, Soaring Solo is a community of single mothers that are determined to fly above society's expectations by rising above our circumstances and setting an example for our children. So I am so glad you joined me this morning. We're going to talk about the battle for your child's mind. Um, I talk a lot about disciplining your thoughts and I think it's important in every aspect of your life to learn how to discipline your thoughts but I also think it's really important that we start to teach our children to do the same thing the younger you can learn this the better off you're going to be right um and we live in a society where our kids are seeing and hearing things that they have no business seeing or hearing it's unavoidable we can't keep them in a bubble uh it's impossible um, they're going to be exposed to things, TV, music, video games, it doesn't matter, school. Um, they're going to hear conversations, they're going to see things, they're, and we need to learn how to handle that. And we need to learn how to uh, not let that take over their mindset um, and teach them how to discern. Um, and that's kind of the goal. We have to teach our children to discern um, you, and we need to do it by using intentional conversations. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna talk about today. The first thing that I want to talk about is that you can't be afraid to talk to your kids about anything. Um, I think we're getting better as a whole about that. I, I feel like as I talk to parents, no subject is too passe. Um, we need to talk to our kids about violence. We need to talk to our kids about sex. We need to talk to our kids about things that are happening in the world. I mean, we need to be completely honest with them, age appropriately honest, of course. Um, and that was my decision as when I, when Vance was really young, I decided that if, if he asked or if it needed to be addressed, I was going to be painfully honest with him, no matter how hard it was. Um, age appropriately honest. Um, there are things that I can tell him now that I wouldn't tell him when he was five, obviously. His mind can't handle that, right? So, but they do need to learn and they need to learn from you. So, and, and kids will tell you, like seriously. Um, <laughs> I laugh because we had a little situation the other day and I'm not going to go too, into too much detail about it where he asked about something that was um, slightly inappropriate but I was totally honest with him uh, to the point that he almost got embarrassed okay I if anything I probably lean too far that way um, so now he gets to the point where w when he can see that I'm gearing up to tell him something that maybe he's not ready to he'll flat out say um, mom too much information don't need to know that yet okay cool we'll talk about that later uh, but we have a pretty open relationship and I did that intentionally because I want him to be to feel comfortable discussing things with me when he has questions when he sees things when he hears things that he doesn't understand or he thinks I don't think this is right um, you know he, we can discuss this and I'm not afraid to talk you can't be afraid you've got to step out of your comfort zone as a parent and you have to talk to your kids about these things think about this you want those open lines of communication so as they get older and as things get more intense or more inappropriate that they're not afraid to come to you you also want them to get accurate information I you know I don't want my child learning about sex from someone besides me so I will bite the bullet and talk about that even though it's difficult with him um, because I want him to know the truth I want him to know not not just the accurate information but my morals and my what I feel is right in this situation I mean I'm pretty sure that I learned most of what I know about sex from cheerleading practice and I can feel pretty confident that it probably wasn't the best information you know maybe not the most accurate I don't know I want my child to be able to come to me with those things um, the second thing I want you to think about is you have to look for opportunities because these don't always come naturally, right? Look for opportunities to talk to your kids, um, to know what they're thinking, to, uh, to ask them questions. I ask lots of questions. That's such a key to starting conversations. I don't care how old your kids are. I don't care if they're two or 22 ask them lots of questions because that gets them talking. And then you find out, where you need to go and what you need to address. Um, because I don't think we ever stop being parents. So even if your kids are adults, 
they still need help. I mean, I, I'm an adult and I still need a mentor and I need advice and, and I want to go to people that I trust. Um, so ask lots of questions and then listen to their answers. I think this is another key that we kind of miss. We get so busy. I'm totally guilty of this. I get so busy that my, my son will want to talk to me and I'll be like, yeah, oh yeah, that's nice. And I'm not hearing a word he says. I'm terrible. I, I'm working. I'm working on getting better with that. But it's really hard, especially when you realize that they're talking about something that's super important. Anything though. Um, Put the phone down, <laughs> stop what you're doing, look them in, in the eye and listen to what they have to say. It's, it's so interesting to me when I think about it because, you know, a lot of the times I think as parents we think, well, that's just silly. Well, it's not silly to them because it's what's, you know, what's important to them at their age is, is different. So even if it seems silly to us as adults, if, if they're struggling with it, if they need to talk about it, we need to focus and pay attention. And it's so hard. It's hard. It's hard because I can only listen to so many, um, you know, call of duty stories. I'm not interested in it, but I have to focus. So uh, we're working, we're working. It, I just remember things, it, it, you know, I remember going through a phase when I was a teenager, going through a long phase when I was a teenager, where I would just get so sad and depressed because I thought I'm the only person that doesn't have a boyfriend. Did you ever go through that? Or was that just me? Like, I remember being in high school thinking, I'm the only one that never has a boyfriend. And I was so sad about it. And it was silly. Okay. As an adult, I think, well, that's really silly. But at the time, oh, my heart was broken. It was so difficult. Um, but as a parent, if your kid's going through something like that, it's really easy to ask questions and make them realize you're not the only one that doesn't have a boyfriend in high school when you think about it. And really, what does it matter? You know, so, but we can't tell them that. We have to let them work it out for themselves. But you have to be able to listen and not think that what they're going through is silly in order to get to that point. Um, my mom is her her whole philosophy she's so funny she says you know if we wanted you kids to talk we wanted you to spill your guts we took you out to eat it's true sit down at the dinner table take your kids out to eat make them put the tablets and the phones away for a minute and have a conversation if you take that time they will spill their guts they will i promise you um here's the key though when you're doing that this is so important don't lecture have a conversation. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I am a, <laughs> I am a negatively motivated person. Okay. So I am the person that if you tell me I can't do something, I am going to show you exactly how I can. Now, don't get me wrong. I got to kind of want to do it to begin with. If you told me, Stacy, you can't run a marathon. I would be like, uh, yeah, you're right. I can't mm -mm. have no desire to do something like that. None. Okay. But if you tell me, um, you should stop. You need to stop spending money. <laughs> I'm gonna go shopping right now. Okay. I, um, that is how I work. So if you're lecturing your kids about you should, and you shouldn't be careful, especially if they have a personality like mine, you might be pushing them right into that. So instead of lecturing, have a conversation instead of telling kids what to th telling your kids what to think, Teach them how to think so that as they become adults, they can learn to process through these things. Um, let them walk through the situation themselves by asking those questions. And then in time, they'll start asking those questions for themselves. I got to flip my note, shall? Um, they'll start asking those questions for themselves and they'll be able to process through sticky situations or, or tough decisions without you even there. And isn't that what we want? We want them to become self-sufficient. I'm having issues with my notes. Oh, well, here we go. Um, so I actually have a resource available that I'm going to uh, let you all have. If you're interested, you just need to private message me or pop it in the comments. I don't care. But um, I'm going to give you a list of some conversation starters, some questions that are great to sit around the dinner table and ask your kids um, and let them answer. Don't disagree with them. Let them answer how they want. Um, some would you rathers. Would you rathers are great ways to start conversations. If you are interested in that, let me know. I would be happy to give that to you. Um, but I want to talk before I go, I'm almost done. But before I go, I want to talk to you about how do you train 
your kids because they said we need to train them. How do you train your kids to think things through while you're asking these questions? Um, there, there are three questions that you need to teach them to think about. Okay, when you when they're making a decision, when um, something happens, you know, when when those mind things get to them, three things. And I'll tell you what, these are good things for us adults to ask too. Okay, so you might want to jot these down real quick. Here's question number one. If I do this, what might the consequences be? <laughs> right? This is good good for us adults as well as kids. Okay, if you make if you make the choice that you want to make, what are the consequences? What might the consequences be? That's the first question. Second question, could this hurt me or someone else? By hurt, I don't necessarily mean physical, but it could be, right? Could this hurt me or could it hurt someone else? Uh, and the third question is, would I be embarrassed if someone found out about this? Oh, that's a big one. Ah, even as adults. Uh, should I have done that? Because... If somebody found out about that, that might not make me feel so good, right? If it was posted on Facebook, would you be okay with it? Okay, so what might the consequences be? Could this hurt me or someone else? And would I be embarrassed if somebody found out about it? Those are three key questions that we need to pound into these kids' heads so that as they're making decisions and as they're seeing things and learning things that maybe they're not ready for, probably they're not ready for, these are three questions that can seriously help them process through that, even if you're not there to walk them through it. So stop. Teach them to stop and think it through before you make a choice or before you take action on things. So important. If we can teach our kids that, they're going to grow up to be productive adults, which is what we want, right? Um, so I hope you got some value out of this. If you want that resource, um, those conversation starters, like I said, you can private message me or you can pop it in the comments and I'd be happy to get that over to you just as soon as I can. Um, but remember, you may be soaring solo but you are not tackling motherhood alone. You guys have a great rest of your weekend.